Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play Nintendo DS games on your PC. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So the first thing for today's video, you need to come to this link. Links is always in the description down below. And this is going to be the download link for the free emulator we're going to be using in today's video called RetroArch. It's 100% free. The first thing you need to do is come here, come to the download section, and we need to download the latest stable build. Or if you have a specific operating system, you can feel free to come down here and select any of the other ones that best suits you. Once RetroArch is downloaded and installed, you should be on this screen. From this point, what we're going to be doing is coming to the main menu right here. We're then going to be selecting the load core option right here. And here we'll see a list of all currently downloaded and installed cores in our RetroArch. Now, if this is your first time opening the app, there will actually be none here. However, what we're going to do is scrolling down on this list and we're going to be looking for the download a core option, as you can see right here. We're going to be selecting this and here we'll see a list of all available cores that we can download and set up in our RetroArch. From this point, we're going to be scrolling down here until we see Nintendo Dash DS. And here there's three different Nintendo DS cores that we can choose from, Desmoom 2015, Desmoom or Melon DS. For today's video, we're going to be using Desmoom 2015. However, feel free to experiment around with the different cores here. If one of them is giving you trouble with a specific game or software, feel free to try out the other cores and experiment to see what gives you the best performance for your computer and the game you're trying to play. Download and install the core, you simply select it or left click or click A on your controller. Some text will appear at the bottom left to say downloading the current core and then your core will be downloaded and installed in RetroArch. You'll know your core is ready to go once you see the hashtag on the right hand side and no more text appears on the bottom left of your screen. From this point we're going to be coming back out of here, we're going to be coming to the main menu again. We're then going to be selecting the load core option one more time and we're going to be selecting the core that we just downloaded which for me is right here the nintendo dash ds core simply select it and now our core is set up and ready to go inside our retro arch you'll know your core is fully ready to go once you look down on the bottom left and you see your version number of retro arch along with the core name right next to it which means our core is currently loaded as the active core now from this point we're ready to talk about games and i will mention for today's video i'm not going to be showing you where to download ds games where it is really really easy to find a quick google search will help you out on this so as you can see i currently have my game right here pokemon on heart gold and it is in a dot rare format now most likely when you download your games they will come in a dot rare or a dot seven zip format but if your file does come in a dot rare or a dot seven zip format you will need rinrare or seven zip to extract your file to be able to play it inside our retroarch emulator in today's video for today's video i am going to be using seven zip again i'll be leaving both of these linked in the description down below so you can download whichever one you would like to extract our games we simply right click hover over rinrare or seven zip and click extract files simply click OK on the pop-up that shows up and then your files will start to extract. You can see my files have extracted into the folder right here. And if I double click to open this up, you can see my heart gold file here is in a .nds format. And that's exactly what we're looking for at RetroArch right here. So for our final files, we're looking for .nds files. So all you need to do is extract your WinRAR or 7-zip files. And most likely inside you will get a .nds format file. And that's where we're going to need to open up and play using RetroArch. So from this point, once you have your NDS file extracted, we're ready to come back to RetroArch. We're going to be coming back to our main menu again and we're going to be selecting the load content option right here as we already have our core loaded from the previous step we don't have to do that in this case simply click load content and then from here we need to locate to where you just extracted your game files so for me i currently have my pokemon heart gold nds file right here from this point all you need to do is left click or select this file clicking the a button on your controller and just like that your nintendo ds game will start to play now from this point you can feel free to resize or scale your window and one nice thing about this is it will actually keep the original aspect ratio of your game and in this case my mouse is going to be used as the pointer in a Nintendo DS. You can see as I scroll around here, it will actually move, which is really cool to see. And you can also connect up a controller as well if you would like. I will mention in today's video, I'm not going to be showing you how to connect up a controller, although it is really easy to do. I'll be leaving a card on screen and a link in the description to my previous video where I show you how to set up and use controllers in RetroArch. Now, from this point, when you're playing your game, if you would like to open up the menu or change any of your settings, what you can do is come up to the top left of your RetroArch window. We're going to be clicking on the command option right here. And here we can see a couple different options including audio disk and save states however most of your settings are going to be included in the menu toggle and here we can see a list of a bunch of different settings we can use for RetroArch, including recording on screen overlays cheats control shaders and a bunch of other things and it's really easy to set up and use here now if you are having issues with your emulator or the speed in which your games run it can be a factor of how powerful your pc or the pc specs you have but one thing you can do is once your menu is open you can back out of here using a right click or b on your controller come to your settings come to the driver 
driver settings and experiment here with your video driver settings to a couple different things to see if one of these will give you more performance than another. It is worth experimenting around with to see exactly what works best for you. Now, if you would like to change the layout and orientation of your screen setup, in my case, it's on top bottom. We can come back to our quick menu again, scroll down here until we see options. And we're going to be looking for the screen layout options right here. We can select this, choose top, bottom, bottom, top, left, right, right, left, or you can even choose top or bottom only. So depending on what you're looking for here, you can feel free to experiment. In this case, I'm going to be choosing left, right. However, you can feel free to experiment and use whatever you would like. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to play Nintendo DS games on your PC. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.